Okay, uh, so uh, I'm Philip Savaggio. I work at a company called Eagle View and uh, work in Rochester, New York. Uh, this is a Eagle View picture of, of Rochester, New York. Uh, this is one of Rochester's proudest exports, uh, Genesee beer. Has anyone ever had Genesee beer? All right, you know why it's proudest is in quotes then. Uh, <laughs> it's because it mostly comes from water that, uh, that looks like this. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and that's a good day for the Genesee River. Uh, so this is a, a three-inch image uh, uh, from, from Eagle View, uh, but oftentimes we care about houses more than we care about big buildings like breweries. So uh, we, have, uh, we actually go way f further in than that. So we, we take images that kind of look like this of houses, and uh, these roofs are in pretty bad shape. Uh, but we also take pictures, you know, here are some more uh, sub-two-inch GSD uh, images, ground sample distance as pixel size in the ground. So we take pictures like this and like this. This guy's talking to the phone outside Food Lion for some reason. Uh, and the issue is when we take pictures that look like this, uh, you know, this is a pretty small area. Well, we really care about whole counties, right? So if you, if you want to take a picture, pictures of whole counties, you have thousands to millions of images, right? And we have to process all of them. And we have to process all of them in a reasonable amount of time. So uh, for large areas, so many images we need to distribute, right? So unfortunately, what we do, a lot of what we do is not as simple as chunk up the images, throw them to a computer, have it process them, each one independently, and send them all back. So we, we have to do like things like divide and conquer, uh, like kind of what you're seeing here. So essentially what we do is uh, we need to model these workflows as things uh, with independent jobs with dependency relationships. And we use Boost Graph Library for doing that, that modeling. Uh, so Boost Graph Library has a bunch of different ways to, uh, to model graphs. Uh, the one we use is adjacency list. And it gives you all these uh, template parameters for customization. Uh, these three that I highlighted here let you control the, uh, in the data structures that it uses. So you can pick, uh, you know, uh, for performance reason and how you want iter your iterators to behave. Uh, this one right here uh, controls how directed your graph is. So whether it's <coughs> directed, undirected, or bidirectional, which is what we use, uh, because you need to traverse uh, the, uh, the DAG, which is the directed acyclic graph in both directions. So for any job, you need to know what it depends on and what depends on it. And these three are kind of the mo most powerful ones. They let the user embed um, their own object into the, the vertices, the edges, and global properties of the graph. So why do we use this? Well, uh, the graph data structure is a really good way to, to represent that workflow. Uh, it's a well-designed library that lets you customize. And we also write these generic functions to export these DAGs to various formats uh, that let us execute them. Uh, so, uh, one of the common ones we do is uh, I really mess up this code a lot, and it, it's always it's never right. So I like to visualize it with uh, GraphViz, like I like I had there. So you can just write this kind of generic function that takes in all those parameters except for bidirectional s, so we can confine it to be a, a bidirectional graph, and then you can just like loop over all the edges in the graph and write out to a dot file without it ever you know without the application ever knowing what a dot dot file looks like, uh, and that's useful, but it doesn't execute the graph. So um, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. This is a, a way that we uh, call that. So you, you simply you call uh, write dot on the bottom there, and you give it a little uh, callback to name all your nodes. And uh, then, then it writes out the dot file for you. Uh, the other way that we do it is I actually want to ex execute this thing. So we also like write out make files from this. Uh, and make files are a little more complicated, but if you fill out your job's inputs, the command to produce the outputs from the inputs and the outputs, uh, you can just have this one function that writes your, your make file without uh, your app ever having to uh, know how to write a make file because I know I certainly only wanted to look that up once because uh, those are really tough to write by hand. So uh, we could do this. Uh, I do this for development because uh, my boss would be really angry with me if I ran up the AWS bills trying to distribute all my little test cases. Uh, so I, I do th this all the time and then we, we can make other, uh, other export functions for like our distributed DAGs. So uh, that is it. Thank you.